ask him about his candid opinion of the 600 millimeter F4. What do you think, Brian? It takes a little getting used to to find the uh, the action. I agree. Uh, but you know, every 10 or 20 shots, you get a good one. The Canon EF 600 millimeter F4 Super Telephoto lens. Just who is this lens for? Stay tuned. My name is Frank White and welcome to another episode of Photography Tips and Reviews. In today's episode, I am going to talk about the Canon EF 600mm F4 Super Telephoto Lens. Now, as you know, you can get a 600mm these days from Tamron, from uh, Sigma, um, and, and they're not even... Uh, prime lenses, they are the, uh, I think they are the 150 to, to 600 uh, millimeter uh, zoom lenses. Uh, but the 600 millimeter F4 prime lens from Canon is truly a lens that's in a class of itself. Uh, first of all, this guy is huge. It is a monster lens. Now, as with any lens, what you really want to know about it is what kind of image quality you're going to get out of it. But I don't need, I, I really even, I really don't need to even go there because if you have watched any sports, if you've looked at uh, anything in National Geographic or Sports Illustrated, then you've already seen images out of this lens. I mean, this lens is truly phenomenal. Now, with that said, I did take a, I did take some pictures for myself and I'm gonna post them at the end of this video. But until then, uh, I kinda just want to talk about this lens a little bit. Okay, so, just let me go ahead and go through the specifications of this lens. Um, first of all, as you already know, this is a 600 millimeter focal length lens. It is a prime, so you're not going to do any zooming with this lens. And quite frankly, you're not going to do a lot of zooming with your feet. Um, and I found that out uh, the other day when I was videoing, um, not videoing, but I was taking pictures of a soccer game and I was at one end of the field, almost uh, maybe a third down the field on the sidelines. And when the players got up toward me and I was trying to use this lens, then I couldn't get both the players' face and the ball in the frame. So I wound up getting a lot of shots with the, with the players cut off about here. Uh, so. If you're going to use this lens for sports, then you definitely don't want to use this lens on the sidelines. It's, it's more of a up in the bleaches type lens. The maximum aperture on this lens is f4 and the minimum aperture on this lens is f32. Um, the angle of view is four degrees on this lens and as with any telephoto lens, you wouldn't expect to get a wide angle of view, um, uh, 90 degrees, 40, um, 45 degrees, you know, it's only four degrees. So, um, so that's something to bear in mind with. In fact, uh, one, of the, one of the things that you may want to do if you borrow or rent this lens is to practice with it before you actually go out and call yourself going to make some pictures, uh, particularly sports pictures, um, because finding the subject can be tough. Um, I was at the Balloon Fest with this, with this lens, and unfortunately, the balloons didn't go up that day due to weather, but there was some flyover airplanes and since I don't have a lot of experience with this lens, I had a dickens of a time finding the airplanes. 
um, by, you know, just panning up and trying to find them. Um, but I was able to find them, and here is a image of an airplane that I was able to get. The, the lens construction of this lens is pretty complex. Let me give you, give you that marketing speakies that I find in all of Canon's um, lenses. This guy has 16 elements in 12 groups. Unless you are really a lens geek, then that doesn't tell you a lot. Um, you know, I can't, I personally, I don't know whether a lens with, with 18 elements in 16 groups is any sharper or better than a lens with 16 elements in 12 groups. So for me, that doesn't mean a lot. Now, what does mean a lot is that it has uh, a diaphragm with nine blades. So what that does is it tells me that this lens is capable of producing some, some really nice bokehs that it's able to isolate that subject and, and create a nice creamy background. And especially if I got some lights, if I got some lights in the background, then it's gonna do a great job in keeping those lights um, more round are are not as um, not looking like hexagons but more like circles um, so and I find that true with with, with, with with most lenses that the more blades they have then the better the bokeh tend to be and especially especially the bokeh balls it does have image stabilization uh, and it has a couple of buttons for image stabilization. Um, I've got image stabilization mode one, two, and three. Um, mode one, as you can probably guess, um, stabilized on both the vertical and the horizontal plane. Um, mode two um, stabilizes on only on the vertical plane. Uh, so if I'm panning up and down, uh, and pretty much not going left to right, then I want to use um, I want to use stabilization mode two and stabilization mode three is the horizontal plane. Um, I can turn the stabilization off, uh, and that goes without saying. And it does have some some uh, capabilities for you to program in some focus presets um, and that for for the limited time that I have this lens in my possession uh, I did not and chose not to go into the the, the focus presets so um, this button uh, for the focus, focus presets has primarily been off the whole time that I've had this lens um, now you've got um, you got AF, PF, and MF. Uh, I'm not sure what PF mean, um, but we're all familiar with the, with autofocus mode and the manual focus mode. Uh, and here in the back, um, you've got from four to five mm, from 4.5 meters. Um, to 16 meters, you got a mode for that, you got a mode for four, and you got a mode from 16 meters to infinity. And what that does is, is it helps you decide on the, well, needless to say, with all this glass, it take a lot of energy to spin this, this autofocus ring to, to, to grab focus on your subject. So 
if your subjects are relatively close by and you don't need to have that focus motor spend the whole cycle, then you can use these buttons to limit how far that autofocus motor will spin this, the elements in this lens. So uh, this, this um, is a real good power saver and, and quite frankly, you will find that on some of the other Canon L lens. Um, in fact, I believe that I found that feature on my 70 to 200, um, but I'm not, for some reason, <laughs> um, I, I'm one of those people who I don't memorize anything. Um, every time you put something in front of me, it's not that I haven't memorized, I'm just able to figure it out um, because I don't rely on my memory. Um, but in any case, uh, I got a spotter here. In any case, this is a nice, a nice lens. Now, now, hand holding. You're not going to want to hand hold this shot, this this lens. You might take one or two pictures with it handheld just to see if you can do it. But it's not a lens that's designed to be handheld. Uh, not only that, but you also are going to make sure need to make sure that you got a decent tripod. Um, you know, some of the tripods, you know, with enough weight on it could cause the legs to kind of start to, 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 um, to collapse. And so you want to make sure that, that, that the tripod is going to handle the weight of this lens. Now, speaking of the weight of this lens, um, I put it on my scale, um, on my poster scale, just for the heck of it when I got it. And it was weighing in with at 9.9 um, .9 pounds. However, according to the specifications on this lens, um, this, this lens has a weight of 8.64 pounds or 3.92 kilograms. So it is a pretty heavy lens. Um, it does have the ability to, to accommodate um, filter, uh, to accommodate filters by dropping them into this guy. Um, and you know, this is fairly, um, ooh, I'm getting fingerprints on the, on the element there, but this is fairly, um, uh, easy. It does take a, a 52 millimeter gelatin type filter that you can stick in here and drop it right here um, at the rear element and voila, you've got a filter. Price. Now, I bought this lens, you know, because I got it like this. <laughs> I only think I bought it up. This lens is is quite an expensive lens. Um, the, it, it does retail brand new for 11.5, um, and you can usually find it used somewhere for around six grand. It's not a lens that you want to just buy and and not use. If you if you're gonna buy this lens, then then you're gonna want to use it unless you just happen to be one of those people with deep pockets. And I am not one of those people's people. Now, right now, the lens have the lens hood on it, so the lens hood uh, can cause the lens to look more impressive than it really is. Um, but even without the lens hood, it's still an impressive lens. Um, so just to show you the face of the lens, this is, this is the lens. and. And it is like huge. Hello down there, down there, down there. Um, so if I take the lens hood off, then which I'm gonna do so you can see how impressive the lens look without the hood. Uh, so I'm gonna just loosen this guy here until I can pull it forward. 
Okay, so the lens hood is really big. You know, it almost looked like a, a top hat, um, but it's a, it's a big lens hood. Uh, stick my arm through it to kind of give you some scale. And so that also helps you see how large that front element is. And that is a large front element. <laughs> I believe that I could probably set this lens on the table and put my sausage and eggs on it and eat off of it, uh, use it as a plate because it's just that large. Uh, if I was to eat standing up, of course. But that's not what it was built for. The focus room, ring is, has manual focus override and, and as you can see, I can, I can just spin it and spin it and it doesn't hurt the lens. So who is this lens for? I knew you was gonna ask that and I'm glad you did. This lens is for, primarily for, I think for sports photographers who shoot in a manner where they can sit back away from the action and kind of uh, pan with the action. I can see it being used um, as a, um, on a race car track, uh, on a football field. Um, I, I'm not so sure it's the best lens for basketball or close-in sports, or any close-in sports, definitely probably for baseball. Um, it's, it's a lens that, that's gonna take, that's gonna get your viewer in, right in on the action. Um, one of the lenses that, that's, that, that, it's one of the lenses that's gonna show you the faces of the players, whether they are driving cars or, um, or running up and down the field. Um, now, it's also a lens for serious birders. Um, for a while there, there were no real alternative, no real contenders to, um, to really good 600 millimeter glass. Uh, but I did mention that Tamron and Sigma have come out with some glass that, that's really good. But the image quality of those glass, of that glass, is not going to be as good as a, as a prime lens. Just by virtue that this is a prime lens, then that tells you something in and of itself. And not to mention that it's a prime lens, but it's a prime lens with 16 elements and 12 groups. But that kind of construction, that's the kind of construction that you normally would find in zoom lenses. So not only is it a prime lens, but it's a complex constructed prime lens. Uh, build quality. The build quality of this lens is fantastic. I mean, it, you won't find a bunch of plastic. I think this, this little front part here is plastic, but that's probably good because if it was metal, uh, and you dropped it. Metal tends to bend and plastic will not. Uh, plastic tends to absorb um, folds and not um, get all bent out of shape like metal will. But on the side here, it's all metal, um, which is what you would expect from Canon's higher-end L lenses. It really is a work of beauty. This lens is really a thing of beauty. When I was um, when I was at the Balloon Fest um, and you know with this hood on this lens, it was impressive enough to have to have people come over to me and say, hey, uh, can I look through your lens? Um, and I even had several photographers uh, walk up to me, you know, just to chit chat um, and check out the lens. So it's it's truly an impressive piece of equipment. But as you know, as we've already discussed, it's a piece of equipment that 
that's fairly expensive uh, that you really will pay for. Anyway, guys, I hope I have been able to give you some really good information about the EF 600 millimeter L Super Telephoto lens. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. I'll read them all. If you haven't hit that subscription button, please do so. Become a part of this channel. And if you like this video, let me know by giving me a like, a thumbs up. I kind of use that information to determine how well I'm presenting information to you. If you're going to shoot anybody today, shoot them with a cannon or a camera of your choice. And remember, guys, keep shooting no matter what. This scene as our backdrop for testing this this piece. How hey, how's it going? Today? All right. Nice looking, Rick. Thank you. Thank you.